Hi folks, I've got something new to show you today. This has been sent to me by a company called Top Don, and it's their BT Mobile Battery Tester Elite. It's Bluetooth. I've got a few cars here, I've got a few batteries, so let's just see what this thing does. Right, well, I've got quite a few batteries laying about the house and also a few cars here as well. I do know for a fact that we had problems with one of our batteries, uh, which we've now swapped over. We put that on the Vector over there. And I also know that this battery on the uh, Vauxhall Astro Mark IV is a brand new battery. So I don't know what this is all about. I've not seen this before. I've had a look on the YouTube. There's not much out there on it, but um, I'm told that it's a pretty good device for checking your batteries and it could do cranking voltage as well. So let's open the box, see what's in there. And you've also got to download an app from the App Store so that you can work it on your phone. So you can sit inside your car while you're checking your battery out. So first of all, let's have a look at the app first of all. Now you have to type in BT Mobile Elite. I've got an Android phone and I use the uh, the Play Store on the, my Android phone. And I typed in BT Mobile Elite and all loads of BT tele, British Telecom stuff come up and I had trouble finding it. So I typed in BT Mobile Elite Top Don, which is the name of the company, and it comes straight up. So it's a little blue app at the time of me doing this video. And you basically download it to your phone, you uh, agree to the terms and conditions, and then you put in the username and password, and then you've got full access to the app. So let's have a look at this thing. So you get a user manual, which comes in different languages. That amount of it is English, so it's quite a bit. Then you get the actual device itself, which is a dinky little box with two quite robust crocodile clips on. So that is it in a nutshell. It's basically got a couple of little indicators on it, one for power and one for Bluetooth connectivity. And these two robust battery clips that literally just connect onto your battery and then you connect this up uh, wirelessly via Bluetooth. So let's get this connected up to a battery on a car first of all. And let's see what it shows us with regard to the condition of the battery which is fitted on this Mark IV Astra, which I know for a fact is a brand new battery. As I say, I've not used this before. This is first out of the box with me. And I do gather you have to know a little bit about your battery first of all. I don't know whether that information is going to be readily available for me on the top. Right, well I don't know whether you can see or not down there, but I can see that this battery is 60 amp hours and it has got 520 CCA, which is cold cranking amps. As I say, you have to get the details off the battery. Nine times out of ten it's on the top there, I gather, but you need to have that information, which should be clearly identified on the battery, before you can perform any test. So I'm just going to connect this up. So positive goes to positive. A negative goes onto the negative, and straight away the power light has come on. So I've already downloaded the app. So that's the app there. It's called BT Mobile. So I'm just going to tap that. We've got a little indicator at the top of the page there which says connect Bluetooth. So I'll touch that. And to show it's connected, you get a little blue light on the Bluetooth come up there. So that's connected. So rather than me stand out here, let's go and sit in the car. Right, okay, so you need to know a few things about your battery. So your battery type selection, so we click that, and you've got regular flooded, AGM flat plate, gel, EFB, whatever that is. Now, if you don't know what your battery is, a regular flooded battery, that is a standard car battery, which is not sealed, where you can tip it up and it's got full of um, acid inside it. An AGM flat plate battery and is what they call an absorbed glass matte lead acid battery it's still a lead acid battery but in between the plates it's got a uh, fiberglass and it should be spill proof or impact resistant so there is a slight difference between that and a regular flooded battery and then obviously you've got a gel battery which we've heard of before and that uses sort of silica sand to turn the acid it's still an acid battery but it's, it uses silica sand to turn the acid into a gel so i know that this is just a a standard regular flooded battery which is a normal lead acid battery uh, it's not a special specialist one like the AGM one which has got fiberglass inside so I'm going, I'm going to stick with regular flooded and then it says step two system standard so if we click on that now there's loads of things that come up here now I don't know what most of this means but I do know CCA is cold cranking amps so if I click on cold cranking amps then click OK because I've got the cold cranking amps of 550 amps, haven't I? I found that already. So we're looking for 
standard CCA, and then system capacity. So we're looking at 550. So we're looking at cold cranking amps, 550. There we go. We've got a regular flooded battery. We've got the CCA cold cranking amps, which is 550. So then we click next. And it should be doing our battery test now. Right, well, it's showing this battery is good. It's got the test result there. We've got a 94% state of health, state of charge, 91% charged. And it's measured 535 cold cranking amps. This is rated at 550, as I said to you. The battery voltage is 12.5. And we've got uh, an internal battery resistance of 5.61 ohms. So that's what it's telling us on the condition of this battery. This is actually a new battery. So uh, you can actually share this and store this data, apparently, for future reference. But um, I'm just going to go back. And I'm going to do the system test, which should test everything on this car now. In other words, it's going to test the cranking test. We've just done the battery test and also a charging test as well. So let's press start. And first of all, it goes through the step of all three. We've actually done the first one, the battery test, but we're going to do it again anyway. Right, so it's just going to do a battery test now with the information we've put in. So you have to again input that data again, regular flooded. We've connected the device. System standard, we're using cold cranking amps. And we're looking at 550 cold cranking amps, which we've already set down there. There we go. Press OK. So we've inputted our data, which I said to you, you have to look for on your battery. And it's going to go and do the test. I'm sorry about the lines coming along there. It must be something to do with the camera. Right, so again, it's come back with a good battery test. State of health, 91%. State of charge, it's now saying it's 88% charge. So it's saying we've got 525 cold cranking amps available. There's our voltage of a battery. So that's the battery test done. So we go back to that now. And now it's going to do the cranking test automatically. So we just press next. It tells us what to do. Turn off all accessories, which I've already done. And then start the vehicle. That's the two things I'm going to need to do. So let's press that. Then it's telling me to start the vehicle. Start the car. Press next. Start the vehicle, which I've just done. And it's now running the test while the car's just started. I've started this from cold, by the way. I haven't started this up at all today. There we go, test result. Cranking test is normal. It's cranked with 10.22 volts, and there's the ohms resistance. So I'm not gonna share that. I'm just gonna go back. And now it's gonna perform the final test, which is a charging test. And we click charging test. It tells us what to do, turn off all accessories. Keep the engine running at 2,500 RPM for more than five seconds and start the test until the test is complete. So I'm just going to raise the revs to 2,500. Press start. So it should now be doing the test. There we go. So it's come back with a loaded voltage. 13.69 no load voltage 13.69 and the charging ripple i don't know what that actually is so uh, how their definition means of that so there we go so press the back button again i do notice sometimes this is a bit glitchy look the back button is not working oh there we go and then show report it's now conducted all three parts of the test So the battery test it's saying has passed, the cranking test it's passed, and the charging test is passed. You can click each individual one. It's a bit glitchy on here. So I have to hit the back button on my browser look to go back. Let me just turn that ignition off. And the system test. There we go. So that's the uh, state of health. It's 91%. State of charge, 88%. Test value, 525 cranking amps. The battery is rated at 550. The battery voltage is 12.53, and there's the uh, internal resistance. So there's your complete test, and if you scroll down, you can see it all individualized there. So that is on a good known battery. We know this is a good battery. 
Right, okay, so coming over to this Vauxhall Vectra. Now this battery here used to be on the car I've just tested over there, and we did have an issue with it, so uh, that's the reason why we put it on this car now, because we're not using this car as much. And this one wasn't really holding a charge. So I don't know what it's gonna read, so let's have a look. So first of all, we'll have a look at our battery. And we can see here that we've got a 58 amp hour battery and the cold cranking amps on this one, the label's nice, nicely on the top here so we can see it, is 510 cold cranking amps. So we need that information. We know it's a standard battery, so it's a regular wet flooded battery, less that lead acid. So let's get our tester. Here we go. So again, our light has come on, our green indicator light saying we've got power and we're automatically connected to Bluetooth straight away. So I'm gonna get back in the car now and do the same test on this battery. Right, okay, we're in the Vectra now. We're connected via Bluetooth. I'm gonna do the system test, which is gonna do all of everything. So we'll make a start. So battery test, cranking test and charging test. It's gonna do them in that order. So press start. Yeah, with battery, in vehicle battery test. So we're gonna select our battery type, which we know is a regular flooded. The system standard, we're gonna use cold cranking amps. And we know the system capacity is 510 on this one. So we'll click that and then click okay. And then it should start to perform the test. Now the car's not running and the ignition is off, so there's nothing on. Right, well as you can see, bad battery, please replace. It's saying that the state of health is 43%. State of charge is 43% and we're only getting 335 cold cranking amps there. Although the voltage is 12.26 uh, and there's our resistance as well. So it's telling us there that there is a problem. So let's go back and it will now do the cranking test. So let's go to that cranking test. Turn off all accessories and start the vehicle. It's telling you what to do. Press next. Please start the vehicle, okay. So start the vehicle. It did start very, very slowly, mind you. Let's see what it comes back at. Now, yeah, I'm a bit dubious about this one because it's saying that the uh, cranking test is actually normal, which I know that it isn't, and it was very, very slow there. So I'm not saying that that is giving a, an actual correct reading in my opinion. So let's go back again. So let's do the charging test next. Charging test. Turn off all accessories, which they are, got nothing on. Keep the engine running at two and a half thousand revs, which I'm gonna do now. Press start. And there we go. So the charging test, it's showing uh, a loaded voltage of 3.76 volts, which shows us that the alternator is working. No load voltage, 3.78, and there's the uh, charging ripple, which whatever that is. So if we go back now, it's a little bit glitchy sometimes on going using the back button there. If it don't work there, look, you have to use your back button on your browser. And then it's a show report. Now this is the bit I find a little bit not clear because it's saying that the battery test is now passed. Cranking test is passed, charging test is passed. The system test, state of health, it's saying it's 43%, state of charge, 43%. It's only got 335 cranking, so it's passed its test, but it's saying the test result is bad. So there you go. You've got to determine what you want from that information. And there's the battery test. Bad battery, please replace. See, they don't always go back. Cranking test. Cranking test is normal. I'll have to use the back button again. Charging test is normal. So I know the alternate is okay. So although it's saying pass there, see, it's got a bad battery. I know it's got a bad battery, this car. That's why we changed it in the first place. But it's saying that the battery test has passed. System test, the whole lot together, it's saying battery test is failed, cranking test is passed, charging test is passed. So that battery test is saying that it failed, and yet when you go back to the main page, it's saying the battery test is passed. So 
That to me is a glitch. Because that shouldn't say pass there, that should say uh, foul or it should be bad battery or something like that. Look, bad battery, please replace. So that shouldn't be passed in my eyes. Hold on, folks. I've got this old car battery here. This has been sitting outside for a while now. I can't even remember what vehicle I took it off. So let's see what this is, what this does. So let's connect up negative to negative. I don't even know if it's got a charge. Oh, it's got something in there, so the lights come on. So let's put that there for a minute. Let's get the phone out, the app. Fire that up. All right, connect to the device. Yeah, we've already done that. Right, so it's just trying to find it, I think. Right, let's click the little Bluetooth app. Cannot find Bluetooth battery tester. Right, let's go back, let's go back. Let's log out first. And then let's sign back in again. Maybe we have to do that. Right, so I have to meet the connect to the Bluetooth device first. Clamps are on. We're looking for that to pair up with it. Cannot find Bluetooth battery tester. Maybe we have to go into our settings. Hold on. Let's go into settings. Bluetooth is on. Cannot find Bluetooth battery tester. Why not? So let's disconnect it. And connect it back up again. And then press the Bluetooth button. Do you know what? I'm going to sit in here. All right, battery test. It won't find the Bluetooth for some reason. All right, I'm going to try again. So we're going to load the app up. Start to please connect Bluetooth device first. Oh, right, for some reason it ain't finding it Bluetooth wise. Here we go. Don't know why that is. So I'm going to bought that mission on that battery. Let me go inside our log cabin and find another battery. Right, so we just connect this one up now. Look. There we go. That's just connected up. And then we go automatically the Bluetooth light has come on straight away. And that's indicated by that logo being solid rather than flashing. So right, we're gonna do a battery test on this one. So we can clearly see that this is 135 cold cranking amps on this battery. So let's press start, battery test. There we go, so it's doing a battery test now on this battery, this little bike battery. And let's see what this comes back with. Well, that's got 100% test result on that one. And it is capable of holding the charge because I have charged this one up, as I say, so I know that this one was a fully charged battery. State of charge, battery voltage, 12.171 amps. Now, this is what I don't understand. It says uh, amps, test value, 290 amps. I don't know what that's referring to because normally to check a battery in amps, you have to put a meter in series across it. So let's do a full battery test. Well, we can't do a cranky test, we can't do a charging test. So the only one we can do there is the battery test. So that's telling me that that battery is okay and that's capable of holding the charge. So I'm pretty happy with that one. I've got another little bike battery here. And this old bike battery here, which I can't actually see the uh, cold cranking amps on it. It looks to have been rubbed off. So there you go, you're sort of playing in the dark with, if you haven't got the full information. Now again, I don't know about this one. That's the positive on that one. And that's the negative on that one. So what we got here, let's have a look. Nothing at all, no light. Oh, very, very dim, look. But there's a good chance that's not gonna connect with a Bluetooth. So that battery, by the looks of it, is totally knackered because it won't even connect Bluetooth. And for us to find the state of the battery, we've got to be able to get Bluetooth activity to our phone. So that one is a no-no as well. So that one I know off the top of my head, it won't even connect, it won't show us any readings whatsoever. And yet, if I pull out a multimeter, let's take that off for a minute and turn that on, we're on DC volts. So if I go negative and positive, it's showing 5.63 volts. So we're getting more readings out of an amp meter on a dead battery, for example, than we can with this thing because it won't connect up Bluetooth wise to the phone. So you can draw whatever conclusion you want from that. I'll draw my conclusion. But not a lot of people know how to work a multimeter. Can you find this information via the app on a multimeter? Yes. Do you carry a multimeter around with you everywhere you go? Probably not, but you do carry your phone around with you. So you can tell at a glance, if you connect this thing up to your battery, what the voltage is and the cranking values of it, which you can probably do on this, but you probably ain't gonna carry one of them with you all the time anyway. Right, okay, so what have I learned from using this piece of equipment? 
Well, there is a couple of discrepancies there which I've shown you in the uh, Voxel Vectra test. There was also some information which wasn't in the manual which you need to fulfill in your drop down menus there and one of them being the type of battery you've got. If you don't know what type of battery you've got you might get wrong results. And also you need information off your battery like the cold cranking amps as well, the CCA value. So you need to have that for this to give an accurate reading. Is it a good tool? Does it do the job? I don't really know because I did know that I had a bad battery on that Vauxhall Vectra and it did show that it come up as a bad battery but when it gave the overall status after performing all three tests it said everything had passed. And the only way I found out that the bad battery was bad was when you click on the battery test where it says pass and then it come up with the, the, the red diagram showing you that the battery wasn't in a good state. So yeah, there's probably a couple of glitches in the software that probably could be uh, sorted out in the software. And as far as cranking amps are concerned, which is normally where you find the battery that will struggle under load, the, all, all these values are based on voltage. In other words, using Ohm's law to calculate using, because if you've got the resistance of a battery, which this obviously gives you, and if you've got the voltage of a battery, you can work out the amps using Ohm's law. But uh, when I've taken a battery in the past into a, a main dealership, for example, or a battery uh, testing place, they get a big resistor, basically, put it across the battery and load up the battery and then they test the battery under load. Uh, and as well as taking the battery cranking amps is concerned, in my opinion, you'd need an amp meter to see exactly what you're drawing rather than using the, the Ohm's law method of uh, working out what the amps are on the resistance of the battery and also on the voltage of the battery. So there you go. That's just my personal findings using this piece of kit. I did have to do some research online to find out the information that isn't provided in the manual with regards to the cold cranking amps that you needed to find that and also the type of battery which you have installed on your car. Generally, it will be a general flooded one, but bearing in mind this does car batteries and bike batteries. We also found out that if there's not enough voltage in the battery, it won't even connect up to the Bluetooth. So there's another thing to remember as well. A battery might not necessarily be a bad battery. It might be just have no charge in it. And when you charge that, it could be still a good battery. But without having uh, Bluetooth connectivity, there's no way you're going to be able to find it out. Where you could find that out like we did on that little bike battery by finding out that that battery was under six volts. This measures from six volt batteries to 12 volt batteries. So that little bike battery still could have taken a charge. I don't know. Anyway, there you go. I hope you found this enlightening. And this is my first time of using this product. And I hope it brings to you what this could possibly do for you. If you're a layman and you don't know how to use one of these, it will give you some sort of indication on your battery. Anyway, thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.